Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Before we start the topic of the day, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, search for everything about Kurdistan and click the follow button. For today's shout out, check out the Kurdish culture on Instagram. This content creator is uploading posts about Kurdish culture and history, music and art, nature and food and the Kurdish people itself. Basically a lot of things regarding the Kurdish life. Take part of this account right now and support our Kurdish brothers and sisters by checking out the Kurdish culture on Instagram and follow the account right now. Link to his account will be provided in the description box below. So, as you've seen, today's subject is the Kurdish Marwanid dynasty. This is a new series here on YouTube where we're gonna talk about different Kurdish empires, dynasties and kingdoms and it was specifically demanded by our Patreon supporter Rando Yasin. If you have any wishes of which videos we should produce, do as Rando and support us on Patreon, something that will give you benefits to change this channel in the way that you like. If you are not interested in a monthly support, you can also support us with a one-time support through PayPal. More information in the description box below. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. The Marwanids, in Kurdish also known as Dawleta Marwani, was a Kurdish Sunni Muslim dynasty which during its prime between 983 and 1085 ruled areas around present Ahmed or Diyarbakir and some parts of the most northern part of Bashur region, southeastern part of Baku region and some parts of present Armenia. It all started with one man, actually a shepherd, named Abu Shuya Bad ibn Dustak. He was a very normal individual in the Kurdish farming life, but would achieve great success when he left his cattle, took up arms and became a valiant chief of war, obtaining local and in time regional popularity among the people around him. However, Bad didn't make his real success before the death of the present ruler Adud al Dawla who ruled the strongest dynasty at the time in that area, called the Buyid dynasty. This Persian dynasty was pushed away after the death of Dawla and Bad could now take over Maya Fariqin, a city located close to Ahmed which he eventually also would conquer. The upcoming years Bad grew and grew and secured his control over various cities and villages around the Van Lake. The Marwani dynasty under Bad would soon take over Armenian lands at the same time as Bad took advantage of chaotic political situations during the rebellion of Bardas Fukas the Younger in the Byzantine Empire. The city of Mus was also conquered by the Marwanids who now had achieved becoming a strong part in the area in 966. The Marwanid dynasty would last for several generations, mostly ruled within the same family. Looking at history among many things, we can find the Syriac chronicle Elias of Nisibis who mentioned the life of Abu Ali al-Hassan, the nephew of Bad. After the death of his uncle, Abu Ali al-Hassan came back to Hisan Kaifa and married the widow of the old warrior chief. He fought the last Hamdanids, which were a local Shia Arab dynasty in the area and would within time conquer all of their central fortresses. According to the scripts available, Abu Ali was killed in the city of Ahmed by rebellious inhabitants. His brother Abu Mansur Said, also known as Mumahid al Dawla, succeeded him. After several years of raids and clashes between the Marwani dynasty and the Byzantine Empire, the two parts agreed on a lasting peace within the Kurdish Emirate in 992. For the upcoming years, the relations between the Marwani dynasty and the Byzantine Empire was quite friendly. The bond between the Marwanid Empire and the Byzantine Empire got even stronger as the Georgian prince David III of Tau was killed during raids close to the Van Lake, reportedly by Arabian tribes. David III, who was a close friend of Emperor Basil II of the Byzantine Empire, focused even more on local Arabian threats and with these new conflicts ongoing, the Marwanid Empire under Mumahid could build up a lot in their dynasty, not at least the walls of Farqin, who until today has Mumahid's inscription on it. However, in the year of 1000, Mumahid of Marwanid's dynasty offered his submission to the Emperor 
Emperor of Byzantine Empire and in return he received the high rank of Magistrus and De of the East. Ten years later, Mumahid al-Dawla was assassinated by his servant Sharwin ibn Muhammad who assumed the leadership. His reign wouldn't last for long as he soon was overthrown even though that he legitimized the ancient law of the Turks calling for that the successor of a leader always was the killer. Less than a year after taking the throne, the Marwan family organized themselves and the third son of Marwan ascended the throne again. When the Marwan family took the power again, the relationship with the Byzantine Empire would decrease a little bit. The name of the new leader was Nasr al-Dawla Ahmed bin Marwan and during his approximately 50 years in power, he became known as a skillful and clever leader who successfully navigated the relations with surrounding powers. In 1026, Nasr al-Dawla took the city of Riha, at the time known as Edessa, and had it in his possession for over five years, before it was taken by the Byzantine general George Manikes in 1031. The next year in 1032, Nasr al-Dawla sent 5,000 horsemen under the command of Kurdish general Baal to retake the town of Edessa from the Byzantine Empire who placed Arab tribes in the area to protect it in the name of Byzantine. General Baal, also known as Mir Baal, born around August 997 in Bitlis, is also known as Baz al-Din and Shere Kurda, which means the Lion of the Kurds. The Kurdish commander Baal took the city and killed the Arab tribal chief. He then wrote a message to Nasr al-Dawla where it was written, If you want to save your lordship on Kirtastan, something that historian interpretates as Kurdistan. The reign of Nasr al-Dawla was the peak of the Marwanid Empire. During his rule, a lot of citadels, bridges and public baths was built up. The famous Pira Dehderi was built in Ahmed during the times of this empire. Nasser also happened to protect political refugees in the area, the most known to be the future Abbasid Caliph al Muqtadi. The Nasser rule was also one where the relations between Kurds and Syriacs in the area was rich in the field of cultural life, something that the history unfortunately have lacked during the years. After the death of Nasr al-Dawla, the power of the Marwanids declined. Another two sons would take the power in the name of the Marwanids, but the end of the dynasty was close and would come through treason as Ibn Jahir, a former vizier, left Ahmed and went to Baghdad. There he convinced the Seljuk Sultan Malik Shah I to assault Maya Farikhin. The consequences of this was that the rest of the dynasty fell under the Seljuks and the last leader of the Marwanids, Nasr al-Dawla Mansur, kept only the city of Jazir for the rest of his reign. Totally, seven Kurdish rulers ruled the dynasty between 983 and 1085 and even though the area would come to see many more Kurdish empires, dynasties and kingdoms, the Marwanid Empire is remembered as one of the most iconic ones. And that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. Until next Sunday, don't forget to like this video, comment your opinion down below and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any further videos on this channel.